Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about a paper concerning viruses. And as always, we'll start with a quick introduction. So you have the background you need to understand what our researchers did. So viruses are really unique because they need host cells to reproduce. They can't reproduce on their own. So basically we have a virus, we have a big old cell, the virus gets into the cell, and when it's in the cell, it kind of breaks apart and its DNA or RNA, depending on what kind of virus it is, uses the cell's machinery and its energy to create more little virus babies. And so in the end, the virus actually uses the host cell to make more of themselves. Now, viruses, when they do this, they use the energy from the cell, oops, can't forget the Y, and the resources, so the cellular machinery that the cell has. And the better they can utilize these, the more quickly and efficiently the virus can reproduce. So it could be a slow process if the virus has to infect individual cells at once. So thinking about the importance of this energy and these resources, cells normally get their energy from a molecule called glucose. And this is just sugar. And normally, so that's energy. So normally we eat our food, our digestive system breaks it down into the components, including the, these sugars that are glucose, and it gets taken up into the bloodstream. And from the bloodstream, it gets into cells. But the problem is, cells aren't very good at taking up glucose. They need some help. And so they get help from a protein called insulin. So if we have a cell, we have insulin that's floating around in the bloodstream, and on each cell we have a receptor. And when the insulin binds to the receptor, it initiates a chain reaction where we have other proteins that are inside the cell that are actually transporters. They are fused to the cell membrane. So these are actually specifically glucose transporters. So if we have glucose in the bloodstream from say a meal that we ate, those glucose transporters will then transport the glucose into the cell so that the cell has the energy that it needs. Now, insulin and this receptor are both proteins and they both have specific structures. And this specific receptor will only bind to this specific protein, insulin. It's basically like a lock and a key, or I like to think of it as Pac-Man and his food. So the Pac-Man is the receptor, and the food, or this pizza, is <laughs> insulin. Now, if the insulin weren't a triangle, if it were a square, and it tried to fit into the receptor, it wouldn't work. So the fact that insulin is this triangle means that the insulin and the receptor can bind together and help mediate glucose to get into the cell. Thinking about the way that cells get energy, scientists were wondering, can viruses somehow hack this system? to make it easier for them to reproduce or make it faster for them to reproduce. So what they did, now we're on to our methods. What they did was they looked in a database of viral uh, genomic information and they were looking for proteins that were like insulin in their sequence. And then once they found some, they actually made the, that insulin in the lab, and then they tested it to see how well it worked. And to test it, they had three different treatments. So the first treatment they had was this viral insulin that they had synthesized in their laboratory. We called this the intervention group. And this is the one that we actually don't know what's gonna happen and this is what we are testing. The second treatment that they had was human insulin. 
and human insulin served as their positive control. So they know that human insulin should work, it should have some kind of impact on glucose. So they're positive that they're gonna get a response. And the third treatment was just saline, so a salt water solution. And this was their negative control. This isn't related to glucose or insulin, they didn't expect anything to change there. So what did they find? Let's look at our results. Okay, so when they looked in the database, they found some proteins that were like insulin that viruses made. They made those in the lab. They compared the structure. Their viral insulin shared about 50% of the same structure as our human insulin. So because the structure is pretty similar, it probably works in the same way as human insulin. So they thought it might have some of the same functions. So then they did their experiment. And they ran their experiment over 120 minutes. And they were looking at the blood glucose levels in mice. So this is 100%, 50 is somewhere around here. Um, so they were looking at the blood glucose levels in mice in response to these two different insulins and this saline solution. So let's look at our viral insulin. So if we have 100% of our glucose in the blood, that means that there's none of it in the cells. Once we add insulin, we would expect the cells to be able to take up the glucose from the blood and that blood glucose level to go down if the insulin actually did what it was supposed to do. So what they found here with the viral insulin is in fact, those blood glucose levels did go down. So that was great. Their human insulin, also went down and actually went down more, so it worked better than the viral insulin. And then our saline stayed about at 100 and went down a little bit towards the end because our mouse is still having its normal metabolism going on, so it's still going to be doing some stuff. So basically, what they concluded was their viral insulin works. That's not what I wanted to do. but our human insulin works better. So what does this mean? Let's get a different color here. So basically what they found is that this viral insulin had a similar structure to human insulin, which means it had a similar function. Basically, it could trick, oops, that's not how you spell trick. Let's try that again. Trick cells um, into getting more energy. What that means is that it might be possible for our viruses to infect and reproduce faster because they have more energy in the cells. Now, don't fret because these viruses that make this viral insulin that these researchers found don't infect people. <laughs> they only infect fish, reptiles, and insects. So what does this mean in the grand scheme of things? Well, there are tons of viruses out there, tons and tons and tons. In fact, there are more than 300,000 viruses that infect just mammals. So any kind of understanding that we can gain about viruses are going to allow us to, quote, manipulate them. And what I mean by that is we can do things like make vaccines. But we have to understand how they work before we can make a vaccine. So along those lines, make sure to get your vaccines. Thanks for listening today. Hope you learned something.